Welcome to the post game rep. I'm Jared Johnson, and whoo, man, it was not pretty early, but man, the ending was oh so sweet for Red Raider fans out there as Texas Tech defeated Houston 38 to 21. And I think, well, the most impressive part of it was obviously the second half and how Texas Tech outscored the Cougars 31 to nothing. I mean, that's. I almost like I could barely say it because I don't believe it. 31 to nothing in the second half after, I mean, Houston jumped out to that 14-0 lead. They really, I know it's cliche, but they did. They punched Tech in the mouth. I mean, Dana Holgerson was aggressive, and Mighty Joe alluded to this earlier in the week that he thought Holgerson would try and do something like that. You know, he had those statements about we're going to wreck Tech and all that, yada, yada. But it sure looked like they were going to uh, early on. I mean, they got that long 16-play Touchdown drive to start the game, onside kick, score again. Um, and then Tech's defense did some things. Tech got on the board with a uh, long run by Taj Brooks, who did a great job. He had two long runs, finished with uh, over 130 yards, I think 134 yards and two touchdowns. Great game for him, the sophomore running back. Uh, you know, I mean, he looks he looks like a legit running back with or without Sarajic. You feel pretty good uh, with Brooks in there. Yeah, he had 134 yards and, and two scores. But, you know, then at halftime, right at the end, Houston marches down the field, builds a 21-7 lead. Then Tech opened up the second half with a three and out on offense, and you're kind of like, ugh. But, I mean, the defense, uh, they came up with four huge turnovers in the game. Four, all right? Um, four interceptions, almost had five. There's a time where the receiver, Houston receiver fumbled twice, but Houston was able to recover it both times. But I think, I, I've been saying, I've been saying over and over again, look, this defense is different. They have older guys, they're bigger guys, they're much more physical. And I think that's really what happened was that Texas Tech just simply overwhelmed them. Their talent, their physicality, their depth, just Houston couldn't hang with them, you know, which is what's supposed to happen when a Big 12 team, a Power 5 team plays a non-Power 5 team. That's what we saw. Um, and then eventually Tech just broke their will, you know. Um, the defensive line started really, like you could tell Coach Patterson unleashed them, stopped having them just kind of like hold up. Offensive lineman, he let them go get after the quarterback, and it changed everything. Toon started hurrying. Uh, Houston's quarterback, Clayton Toon, started hurrying his passes, throwing really bad balls. And then, man, Tech players made really good plays on the ball. You know, And like I said, it seemed like on every tackle Tech had in the second half, it was a huge hit. And there was even one play where a dude broke a big hit or like fell on the defender and got up and got hit even harder the second time. I even joked on the board, like, Tech had – more big hits on that one play than they've had in seasons this decade, you know? Uh, and that's just barely an exaggeration because how inept the defense had been, but also had how physical and how good the defense looked tonight, especially in the second half uh, against Houston. But I want to give you some numbers. Like I said, four turnovers. They had nine tackles for loss, uh, three sacks. Um, they held, uh, man, they held Houston to 2.2 yards per carry on the ground. I mean, that's huge. That's significant. Uh, Texas Tech, on the other hand, averaged over 5 yards per carry. Houston averaged only 2.2 yards per carry on the ground. And then, offensively, period, Houston only averaged 3.4 yards per carry. I mean, come on, 4 turnovers, 21 points, 3.4 yards per play. I mean, uh, you'll take that every time, you know. So, a very good performance by this defense when they looked kind of lost at first. It looked more like Houston Baptist than what we saw later on in the game in terms of you know, blown coverages, guys running wide open down the field. You know, in the beginning it was very frustrating because, and I, I even apologized to my customers, to y'all, uh, at halftime because I was so disappointed. That's not what I had seen all offseason was, was the performance in the first half. That just, it was blowing my mind. Uh, but what we saw in the second half, I mean, that's what I expected. And ultimately, I mean, I picked Texas Tech to win by 14 points, and they won bigger than that. So I won by 17 Ultimately, really, they were more impressive than I was expecting because of, like I said, that talent, that depth just overwhelmed Houston. And then, honestly, one of the big problems, and uh, I said inside the Red Raiders, Mighty Joe and I talked about this over the years so many times, was it seemed like this Texas Tech program had a hard time overcoming adversity through the years, you know? Like, normally if they got punched like that, it's like Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan to get punched in the mouth, and, you know, Tech had that deer in the headlights look, uh, you know, early on, but they they recovered, uh, made some great adjustments in the second half. And I mean, come on, thirty-one to nothing in the second half speaks for itself. The defensive performance, the numbers, the sacks, the tackles for loss, 
the turnovers, the only 3.4 yards per play. I mean, that all, those all speak for themselves. I mean, uh, great performance. So defensively, wow. You know, offensively, there were some problems. Um, first off, EZ, he is the star that we all said he was, we thought he was. I mean, he just looks – he actually almost left some plays out there. But they decided with – and Marcus Jones is a good player. Don't get me wrong. Very good player. But he's 5'8". Easy 6'3", 220. I mean, and that's what we saw. Easy just, you know, he posted up on him and he couldn't do anything. Um, I, you know, Easy is a very good player. Whether you throw it to him short and he breaks it long on a screen or if you just throw it up to him like they did late. I mean, and now Texas Tech has a quarterback who could get the ball out there. That's the difference. You had Tyler Shuck. And, you know, I don't even think Tyler Shuck had a great night. I mean, he, he didn't make really that many mistakes. I mean, you could say a couple of his decisions in the pocket were eh, but <clears throat> he finished 17 for 24 passing with 231 yards and a touchdown, a long 50. He had that touchdown to Xavier White there at the end of three-yard touchdown, which pretty much sealed the victory. Uh, but then he also uh, rushed six times for 21 yards and a, and a touchdown. So, I mean, good game. Not a great game, but a good game. And uh, good enough to win with the, the, the talent he had in the, in the defense. So, And then you had Taj Brooks doing his thing. And that's the formula. You got a stud receiver, stud running back, quarterback now making mistakes, but can get the ball down the field to make defenses pay. And then Tech's defense, you know, doing what they do. And then special teams... I mean, you had the, the blunder on the onside kick, and then Chadarius Townsend fumbled another one that it was almost, you know, a turnover. <clears throat> but they did a really good job in punt and kick coverage, so it's hard to be too down on them. I mean, uh, it could have been a lot. I mean, it could have been a lot worse. They had a really, they did a really good job in coverage and the kick coverage, and it's one of the very best in, in the country. So uh, that was huge. Um, Offensive line, shaky at times, especially in, in pass protection. I mean, uh, Caleb Rogers got beat a couple times around the edge. Um, and, you know, Houston has a good defensive front. We knew that coming in. Uh, but, I mean, you're going to face at least comparable, if not better, defensive fronts in the Big 12. So, uh, you know, they're going to have to shore that up. Whether they scheme around it or what, they're going to have to figure something out there. But, uh you know, some big catches from guys like uh, Travis Kuntz late in the game to convert and move the chains. Um, yeah, I mentioned Taj Brooks. All the all the big hits on you. Colin Schooler was great. Rico Jeffers with the pick six. Uh, Christian Merriweather with some big plays. Uh, Reggie Pearson coming up and thumping people. Marquise Waters didn't have his name called as much as I thought, which on one hand, that means he didn't get beat deep. But also, uh, I just thought he would make bigger plays. But he had a couple of nice hits in there. Um, the defensive line in the second half, Jalen Hutchings like had a whole drive that he stopped him, so he blew up himself with a sack, and he drew a flag, and then made a tackle on third down to get off the field. Tony Bradford had a sack, made some had some good plays. Devin Drew made a couple really nice plays. Uh, Phil Bleedy also got in on a good play. I mean, it was a little bit of everybody. Um, Malik Dunlap, Rashad Williams. Um, I mean, I feel like I got to name the entire defense. Uh, Josiah Pierre played more at linebacker than I was expecting. He played well. Big dude running around out there. They just looks like a completely different defense. Uh, but it looks like the defense I've seen, you know, this offseason, which I've been telling you all about. So I was glad that at least in the second half it played out the way I was telling you because I was getting nervous there. Like, man, you know. Um, but big win for Texas Tech. Now Stephen F. Austin, the home opener, Florida International after that. You could really tool up, work on some things that you saw that you didn't like. Get the fan base uh, behind you. You should move to 3-0 going into that Big 12 opener against Texas. So you start looking at the performances from the Big 12. And it's just the first week, but, I mean, there's some winnable games out there uh, for Texas Tech. So, uh, whew, what a tale of two halves. But uh, really great half. If, you, if you're going to choose one to show out in, it's definitely going to be the second half that you want to do. And, as uh, RG3 and the broadcasters were saying, somebody needs to tell Daniel Holgerson that if you're going to wreck a Big 12 team, if you're going to wreck Texas Tech, you got to do it for four quarters, not just for one quarter. So with that, I want to thank you for watching, and until next time.